Max, welcome to Fight Week, but not just any Fight Week, UFC 300 Fight Weeks. You know, you've been atop of these amazing cars before, you've been in title fights before, but does this one feel a little bit extra special? For sure, you know, first things first, you gotta ask Connor, what are you laughing about on your comment, brother? Yeah, I did see that, I didn't know yeah, what's... Yeah, 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 go ask him, go ask him, what are you laughing about? Hopefully you can get Lucky Charm shorts or something. Good for him, you know? We are talking, of course, about the floral pattern shorts you've got for this fight. Um, yeah, did post it, Connor did put a laughing emoji on it, but curious how you feel about being able to rep them in the octagon. I loved it, I loved it, man, I loved it. You know, it came, it, it came together real quick. Being able to use it here at UFC 300, I'll hopefully, uh, hopefully they leave it for me so I can keep using it every fight. So we see what happens. Do you think that's important for athletes to be able to represent themselves and, and sort of express themselves on ways other than just you know their fights? I think it's cool. Yeah, I think I think it's a great way. You know, put it, put in a little flavor in it. You know, I guess so. I understand the whole uniform look because we're trying to you know go after like you know follow other major sporting leagues. So at the end of the day, I get it, but. To have your own, you uh, have your own flavor, and finally I get mine. It's, I mean, the people wanted it. You know what I mean? Tell where's Hunter, where's Dana? Tell them, tell them the numbers of the sales, because I, I want to see. I'm pretty sure that floor shorts is popping. Justin Gaethje, right? Obviously a phenomenal fighter, BMF. When this fight was announced, I saw the reaction with someone was like, "Oh, he hits too hard for Max." You know, a guy who's never been dropped before in the octagon. When you see those comments and people apparently being concerned for you and about your career after this fight, do you just think, "Okay, well, we'll see on Saturday"? <laughs> we find out. We find out. You know, that's the beautiful thing. Every time uh, I did any of these interviews, go watch it all fight week. Every time they ask me, "What is you know, what is the main thing? What is when you come to think of Justin? What do you think of this fight?" I think of violence, and uh, this happens. You know, I smile. You know, I smile. This is, this is what Real Fighters is about. Uh, Justin's a BMF. The beautiful thing is everybody has questions and uh, they, we have the answers come uh, UFC 300, Saturday night. Uh, I've been watching your YouTube channel, great content on there. I recommend everyone go watch it. You've been showing yourself bulking up for this fight a bit more than you did for that Dustin fight. How do you feel now walking around ready for a lightweight title fight? Brother, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I, I talked about this earlier today. I hate talking about it, but you know, that Dustin fight was... It is what it is, you know. <laughs> my, my manager is calling me Muffin Top Max this whole camp, you know. So at the end of the day, that's what it was, you know, for this fight. And we wanted to put on the right weight. We wanted to, put on the, we wanted to be smart. We wanted to be strong, but we still wanted to be fast. So I, I think we found, found a, a very even ground, and uh, you guys get to see come uh, Saturday night. There was a, a quote from your coach on one of your video blogs where he said, uh, Max already has a BMF belt and it's in his chest. Mm -hmm. Do you think, comparing your skills to Gaethje's, that this could come down to whose heart is bigger and do you think you beat him in that category? We see what happens, you know. We see what happens. I think a, a true BMF is a guy who, you know, who, who's willing to fight and go in there like gladiator days, you know. And he said it before. If he was a, Like I said, when I'm a gladiator, he said it in gladiator. He, he would have fight to the death, you know, in a coliseum. So the beautiful thing is... Uh, we get to find out, man. We get to find out. Attrition is going to be a big thing in this sport, I believe, uh, in this fight with him, and um, we get to find out. Max, we're here. Just one last quick one on the jump up to lightweight. Um, was that a conscious decision after the Dustin fight, like coming off of that? Like, if I ever go back up to lightweight, I have to approach this differently, or was that just a change right now for the Dustin? I mean, the Dustin fight, I, I hate talking about it. I hate saying it. We just, they came with an opportunity, and opportunities like that, you cannot, you cannot, you, you do not say no, you know? It was just a time thing. With the Justin one, I think it was like six weeks or whatever, and if you count down the two weeks that you, you, you kind of come down from training week. That's like a four week, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, real fighters stay ready, like I always said. And I felt like I was ready. If you go watch that Dustin fight, there's a couple of things that I had to change. And, you know, the outcome is different, you know what I mean? And now we had 10 weeks, 10, 11 weeks. I don't know what it is for this fight. You guys get to see the difference, you know. Uh, uh, a lot of people like looking in the past. A lot of people like searching for stuff. They keep forgetting what's right in front of them, you know. And you guys are going to see come uh, Saturday night. Justin has uh, obviously famously declared himself the most exciting fighter in the UFC. I'm curious, do you agree with that, or do you kind of put yourself uh, above that? I mean, uh, how are you going to disagree with him? The guy had, what, 12 fights in the UFC, 12 bonuses? Brother, I, that speaks for itself. It is what it is. Uh, I, I, I'm just excited to be sharing the octagon with him come UFC 300 on a big event like this. When you got, when you got a card like this, the spotlight like this on us... Uh, being the people main event already, you know, I think we can still show the UFC pushing, pushing. Every time I see an ad on UFC for UFC 200, it's me and Justin. So at the end of the day, I, my Tim, 
Tim, Daniel, someone needs to get on the phone with Dana and Hunter, and we're going to talk numbers about some things because uh, it's looking kind of funny. And Justin said that uh, I think the ideal scenario for him would be doctor stoppage because he doesn't really want to put you out cold because he has respect for you. So I'm curious, what do you think of that prediction? I mean, it's cool, you know, it's cool. I, I don't want to put the man out cold either, but it's the fight game. That's what we love, you know. Like I said, for 25 minutes, I'm going to go in there. He's going to come for my neck. I'm going to come for his neck. And, uh, you know, after we can hug it out, you know, go get a beer. I, I mean, I don't drink beer. He can get his beer. Maybe I get a shot with him and, uh, you know, we get a pizza or something. And last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal? I think it's going to be a fun one. I think a lot of people are calling out Jamal just because he only as good as your last fight. And Jamal's last fight was what? Like, I don't know, how long was he out? 15 months, brother. Like, nobody even cares, you know. That's just what it, that's just what it is, you know. And then the, you see him posting funny videos and... Everybody keep hating on him like us fighters don't have a life outside of training. So at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a crazy fight. Both of them have, have, uh, have, have crazy power. You know, everybody talk about Alex's power. Uh, and I, I, I think Jamal has that crazy power too. How much time? He, he, made the man, he made the man in Johnny Walker do like something crazy after getting hit. That's, that, that was kind of amazing. So I think it's going to be a tough fight, man. It's a, it's a pick em fight. It's a coin toss. And... Um, I'm glad that I, I get to be here and witness it. Max, people were uh, very excited by your idea to have Mark Coleman wrap the title. Justin was in full agreement. Any update? Is this going to happen on Saturday? I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but I heard he's going to be here. And I, he'd probably be in Dana White's section, right? So, I mean, even if, if he's there, maybe if I see him or Justin see him, maybe we just tell him go, go in the cage, you know? Who's going to stop? Who's going to stop him from entering the octagon? You know, good luck. <laughs> Justin also said he wants uh, three hundred thousand dollar bonuses for this for UFC three hundred. Um, can you use some of your sway? You've been here for a long time. Are you gonna? Oh yeah, brother. I'm going. I'm this? going to. When we did a fighter meeting, we always have fighter meeting. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to say five hundred k, so we can we can start. You know, like we can start going back. Okay, four hundred and three hundred. I'm like final offer one hundred fifty. Come on, this is UFC three hundred. It's huge. The two guys that is pushing the the pushing the fight is asking for. Why not? You know. Yep, I agree. And I remember you said at one point when you were growing out the hair that you were never going to come into a fight week with short hair again. Why did you change your mind? I mean, just because you guys, had, <laughs> a lot of people is forgetting who Max Bless Holloway was. They, they need a reminder. UFC 300 was the was time and uh, you guys are about to see a whole different animal, you know? Max, hey, Max right here. Uh, Max, so uh, I saw on your Instagram you built the Max Holloway Fitness Center and the Why Night Clubhouse for the Boys and Girls Club. I mean, obviously as a guy who's been very impacted by martial arts, what did it mean to you personally to be able to give back to your community at that level? It meant a lot, you know I mean? Being able to give back to my community at the Why Night Boys and Girls Club was huge. I always wanted to do something for my community, so it meant a lot. They, I'm also, they also gave me the Health and Fitness Ambassador of the Boys and Girls Club, so that was huge. But to be able to have that little gym spot in there, to have kids uh, uh, train safe and be smart and, and do the right decision, you know? Like when we went open, I told the kids, a lot of them is scrappy already, you know? So hopefully we can, we can uh, grab that energy, grab all that energy and put it in the right direction, you know? Hopefully five, 10 years, 15 years, some kid from that gym that started that gym or even just touched and trained in that gym might be sitting in front of you one day, and uh, that would be a uh, mission complete. Max, and then my back here. You've already left such a strong legacy at featherweight. I really don't know that you have anything left to prove there. Is lightweight going to be your new weight class, or do you plan on going back down to 145? Uh, we see what happens. We see what happens. You know, in this sport, having options is always good. You know, and uh, first things first is Justin Gaethje. But um, there, there, there's a fun fight down there that a uh, the man keeps talking and I keep hearing, you know. So my only advice to that guy is, like, uh, when the contract come up, sign the dotted line. Don't make no excuses. Max, over here. You fought here in Ninth Island many different times, but this occasion, right? Where does this occasion rank amongst all the times you fought here in Ninth Island, given the magnitude of the event? Oh, this is huge, bro. This is huge. This is the hugest. This is UFC 300. What more can I ask for? Like I said, every time we fight in Hawaii, you guys, uh, every time we fight in Las Vegas, the Ninth Island, you guys see all the Hawaiian flags. You know what I mean? And uh, being UFC 300, being this big, being on a card like this, being on a history card, it's... 
it's going to be huge. You guys are going to see a wine flag swarm that damn arena like always. And uh, I'm just blessed to be a part of, the, a part of this. And other than that Box. short amount of preparation from that last fight against Pori at 55, are there any things from that specific fight that you can take as learning experiences in order to get your hand raised this time fighting at 55? Not really, man. Dustin, Dustin, and uh, Dustin and Gage is two different animals, you know, two different beasts, two different fighting styles, two different stances, so, and two different ways of attack. So we see what happens, you know. I, I, I felt like I'm, a, I feel like I'm a vet in this game. I fought a who's who, and um, at the end of the day, this is another guy up there that I got to figure out when I get in there. So we find out UC 200. Max Owen here. So if you get BMF title, probably next matchup for you is the new champion Lia Topuria. And what do you think about that? Questionable. That's it. Uh, questionable. I got, everybody keep asking me, what do I think of Topuria? Uh, yeah, fighting Topuria. He's questionable. I, 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 I'll fight him. You go ask him that question. Ask him that question about me. At the end of the day, UFC, I always wanted to fight for the title. I always want to do this. A lot of contenders, they gave me, they gave me a lot of up-and-coming contenders, and then there's one that didn't come up to, to, towards my way. So you can ask UFC about that. You can ask him the question.